morning, everyone, and welcome back to Hardy and Steve Watch the English Podcast, Episode 3, Vultures on the Line. How are we doing tonight, Steve? Very good. It's a nice Saturday evening, ready to record. Okay, so they introduce new characters in the beginning of the episode, but I'm not going to go um, through the timeline. I'm going to just pick up where I found it interesting um, and Because our main characters are still Eli and Cornelia. And in this episode, Cornelia is headed towards Oklahoma and Eli is stuck on the homestead with the Clarks, Katie and John. Uh, What are your thoughts on that, them being separated? Well, it was pretty clear last episode that the Clarks were not going to be as nice as they seemed. And we were proved right. Uh, Meanwhile, we knew that the road south for Cornelia to deliver the two Mennonite children to their extended community was going to be dangerous and fraught, and indeed it is. Yes, they uh, come across uh, the new character of... uh, of, uh, is this the, the scientist guy? Oh, Black-Eyed Mog. Black-Eyed Mog. And her sons, played by Nicola McAuliffe. And Black-Eyed Mog looks at... We'll come back to the the Jensen uh, character yeah. later. But um, Black-Eyed Mog looks kind of neat. This is what yeah, she looks she, like. Uh, well, you can't see on the podcast. But yeah, she has dark sunglasses in a time um, really before... Um, con- like there was smoked glass and there were thin stones that could be used and she uses a pair of these and uh, she's got kind of inset eyes when she takes the glasses off to look in a telescope and she's obviously a bandit um, we get to see her um, potty mouth <laughs> um, because her sons want to overtake Cornelia's uh, wagon but she's not impressed she doesn't think it's worth it to attack them they don't have very much of value so well she she rattles off prices for the wagon and mm-hmm. the horses and the gun and um and then she makes a vulgar thing about dipping their dipping their wicks and i i was going to just ignore it but <laughs> um I, I wasn't so clear why she didn't have them attack immediately it sounded like she was going to or, or going to later she she, she calculated the cost uh, and the prize, will you know, what yeah. they would be worth. And she didn't think that it was worth it. She said, uh, you know, that's what she said. She added all the things that they could get from the wagon and all this right. stuff. And I guess she presumably it's a think. hassle for them to go sell that stuff. She did not think it was worth it. So she's a tough character. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting to note that in the West that there are parts that have different like mob sections like who has this or gang war or you know yeah. some people had this part uh, others had this other part and it's like the, it is the wild west cartelized banditry mm-hmm. they all have their territory exactly so she came across a tough looking lady um but before she did let's go and um discuss jansen i was going to leave it because He's a minor character, and... Uh, and he doesn't last long. He doesn't last long. So he, he goes on about Darwin and um, then turns into kind of the, the ugly side of how Darwin's ideas were used early on to support But he was racism. attributing the work of poet Tennyson to yes. the scientist Darwin, which she corrects. Yes. And so it, it sound, he sounds learned until he turns out to be kind of a scientistically racist blowhard right he's uh he's noted for saying that well he was trying to explain to her you know cowpox and then it it, then you know um kind of extrapolated that society must absorb the indian into into uh itself basically so that they would no longer exist reasoning by analogy Mm -hmm. not valid um but um then he himself gets killed by a wandering Native a wandering, American. <laughs> yeah, and he, 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 he says to Cornelia as she plays dead, I know I didn't shoot you. Mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to shoot you. Mm-hmm. 
I'm after this guy. He went where he should not. Mm-hmm. Well, she's like, well, where am I not supposed to go? And he doesn't even answer her. Yeah, it kind of just like, trails off and disappears. That's for me to know and you to find out. Meanwhile, Eli, he gave her a, a compass that he thought belonged to Katie and John Clark. But they didn't actually own it. They had stolen it. They stole it from the wagon that that Cornelia and Eli brought in. And so, John mm-hmm. was saying, Eli, you have a debt to me for this. In exchange for this compass, you got to do all this work. Mm-hmm. And Eli's like, wait a minute. He realizes, he finds the compass case, and that was, quote, my compass, or that, like, I brought you in that compass. Yeah, and, you know, he refers to John and Katie as hucksters. Um, yep. And what what is really a huckster? Do you huckster know? is someone who swindles. Right. Who a gives a bad artist, deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, fraudulent deals, deals where they don't reveal all the information. Mm-hmm. And um, you know what? There's an interesting s- uh, scene between um, be- between uh, whenever Katie and John are, are in the scene, it, it is interesting. And um, e- Eli comes off as a really decent person wanting to work off his debt until he finds that they are just... Uh, it was a fraudulently obtained Twisted debt. liars. Um you know, and uh, because he feels this way about them, there's a certain level of danger. Um, and because they've been around for a long time, they've been doing their long game and making these deals, um, you know. Um, and it's a lot of selling people out. Mm-hmm. They know the local bandits. Mm-hmm. And indeed, they sold out that um, Mennonite parents. Mm-hmm. The, uh, whose children that Cornelia were rescuing, yeah. you know, basically tell the bandits, hey, there's someone coming in exchange for a cut. And that's why Cornelia, when she uh, was able to bring the children to the Mennonites, I thought this would take a lot longer, but it didn't. She safely squires them away. They let her know that uh, the uh, Katie and John are not good people. Um and so she rushes back to try and save Eli because she knows now that Eli is in grave danger because Eli does not know how despicable these two are. Yes. And when she gets there, you know, meanwhile, you know, John's been making all sorts of deals about Eli because he yeah. realizes Eli yeah, is a, Eli is an important person. He used to so, work for the U.S. Um, there's there's a lot of um, stuff that the U.S. had done yeah. that uh, affected the area, and there would be a lot of he's he's valuable. He's valuable, and he could yeah. get a good price for because he's an eyewitness to uh, to something that happened at Powder Creek. And uh, we we get yeah. So that comes later, but so he's. We know that Eli's in danger, and so does uh, Cornelia. Cornelia. So she comes racing back to save him, and uh, she, she meets Katie digging a grave. And they have a very intense exchange, whereas Katie uh, thinks that she can outmaneuver uh, the English. Yeah, because Cornelia's pointing a gun at Katie the whole time, and Katie gets her to disarm with sweet words. And eventually, Katie's, they have a struggle. They have a struggle. Katie is going to grab the gun, but it's no sooner has Katie grabbed the gun than oh, Cornelia stabs Katie with the, the knife. Because we saw several scenes ago, close up on the belt, of the knife at Cornelia's belt, and you know, we're meant to remember. I remembered. Oh yeah, Cornelia had a knife. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. Katie has a funny one. Like great line. Yeah. Yeah. At the shanked end there. by a cracker. Anyways, um, you know, as as all things go when you have to go. That, oh, and that's, and that's the lead in, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, Katie's not dead. She's bleeding out. And Cornelia is going to use this. She gives this great speech to John about, you know, uh, John thinks he's just walking into the room. And Cornelia is there with the gun and just says, bargain for your life. Good. Now bargain for Katie's life. You should go help her. She's bleeding out. You still have time. Right. But, you know, I, I like these one-on-one scenes where so much is at stake. It's intense. And you can see Emily Blunt's acting chops come out. And we see uh, Chasky's... Uh, and to be honest, until that, until that speech, the episode kind of dragged for me. 
it was a lot of information because in the beginning we we are introduced to the Flynn family and then we're um, you know introduced to you know this murder and suicide mystery going yeah. on. This is all out in the B plot in Wyoming mm-hmm. where Cornelia and Eli are trying to get to. Yeah, and Sheriff Marshall has to investigate those uh, those incidents. Um, and uh, we're out here going, well, where's our main characters? <laughs> we're still trying to find out what's happening to Cornelia and Yeah, let's, let's and not Eli. even worry about the B-plot at this point. Well, once it gets, Co- you know, Once it connects up. Yeah. Because so we didn't. don't know what it means yet, to be honest. Yeah, because we we just we just know about the cowpox. And we know that um, when the cows escaped... From uh, the Myers farm. Well, okay, they're, they're, escaped. The, there's, there's the Flynn and the Myers. Okay, everyone. Yeah. So, um, the Myers were the murder suicide. The Flynn's were the neighbors. And also, if you can recall in the first episode, the uh, the soldier that had been avenged, his brother is uh, the surviving Flynn brother. Yes. Um, and I don't think those cows escaped. I think the the cattlemen who stole them cut the wires and said they were out on on open land. But we were introduced to Thomas Trafford in the last uh, episode, The Cricket Player, and he is so happy to say to uh, Flynn's wife, um, your cows were unmarked, so therefore they're free to take them. And that's, yeah, I guess, they belong the... to the Cattlemen's Association, right. which is the, the cartel, basically. So everything's a cartel. Yeah, and they couldn't afford the membership pricing, so they're not members of that consortium. So that's if, that they even, the were, that's if there even was a price. I, th- I don't think there was, but it was, you know, why would you want to pay for this when it's your cow, and, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, sh- so that that was the plot that opened. Um, and, you know, as far as that goes, we still don't have an answer as to why there was that murder suicide i'm sure we're gonna find yeah out. It, it was sort of oh she's got these spots and then one of the other guys is well did the body have spots on them oh it was cowpox and they're like wait is cowpox something you'd you know do a murder suicide over i mean maybe smallpox right where you if you know that you're in for a lot of suffering and a very low chance of survival sure but cowpox is what you get on purpose to inoculate against smallpox I don't know. It didn't make sense. Mm, yeah, we'll have to wait to find out. But he, let's revisit Cornelia versus John. Um, it's intense. That was really the best scene. That one. It was intense, and she has this delivery in the in the style of when she was up against the mini boss in episode one, and where she felt that she was seriously under, um, uh, uh, you know, underpowered, uh, or you know. Uh, against him and in this case she feels she's more powerful she feels that let's revisit that scene i'm much more capable of taking you out this time you know this boss and then um you know she keeps wanting to know what happens to what had happened to eli and uh you know we find out i'm not sure if it was john that told doesn't her. seem to know yeah but in the next scene though we see kills on the water. He's yeah. the he's the Native American, and it's his compound. His people have Eli, and they've been looking for Eli for a long time. And or he, at least someone that knows what Eli knows. He wants to know about the massacre of Chalk River, and that was one of the. Uh, oh, Chalk River. I thought it was Powder River. I got confused. N- well, because Powder River is where Sheriff Marshall was investigating the oh, suicide right, right, murder. Right, right. Okay, okay, so but Chalk River is the massacre when he was working for the U.S. Cavalry. Uh, Eli, that is. Yeah. Um, and what Eli might have witnessed during that time. So yeah. now that's another mystery that involves one of the main leads, which um, I'm excited to find out for. Yeah, and that's that's the episode. It's kind of a cliffhanger. Because we don't know what um, uh, Kills on the Water is going to do to Eli or demand from Eli. And we don't know how Cornelia is going to transition from having all the cards at the at the Clark Ranch uh, into being safely away from there. Because her, her control of the situation is obviously very fragile. And we don't know how this connects to the situation in Powder River. And... Uh... 
they're that's where they're supposed to end up um where um eli wants to get his land by plot armor presumably they'll solve their local problems in nebraska with the clarks and kills on the water and make their way west northwest but uh but how are they going to do it we don't be, know. be interesting so what do you give as a rating for this episode um three i i think i really liked the the back 15 minutes of it <laughs> and the rest of it was disposable for me it, it it took a long time i mean even me i really liked this series by the way i'm excited for the series i love the environment i like the scenic uh takes and uh, i like the slow delivery i like the characters like black eyed mog i mean it, it kind of you know kind of tickles the the she's imagination a she's a, good a little bit you know um so i i know this is a bit of world building um and it's it gonna yeah. be you know patient inducing for both of us uh but i I, I felt like at the end, the payoff was really great to see that scene. And I, I can't wait to see what happens afterwards. So I, I give it three and a half stars. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. We will uh, see you next time. Until next time. Thank you. Bye.